they go doing me now? I'm still a talk of the town. Don't need assistance, I'm hooking them down. We turn the spots in the frowns. You can't hop away. Yeah, we juggin' every state. Count the suit. Y'all niggas slay. All right, so hey guys, we're in a new episode of Talk of the Town. Today we got a special guest, M3 Ra. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about how you got your name. M3 Ra. Basically, I got my name. I bought an M3. That's like one of my first cars. Like, like I actually bought for myself. Like, okay. cash. Like, I mean, an exotic car. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I bought for myself cash. And <clears throat> I pull up in a black with it. All my friends was like, "Yo, M3. That's your new name now." You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I guess you know. So you was how old at this time? So yeah. How old was you at this time? I was like what, 22? Okay, okay. Uh, I was still. You know what I mean, but it's around the ages where you know, start doing things on your own. So. Yeah, I got that call and then everybody's like, yo, M3, M3, M3. And then it just, the name just stuck with me, you know what I'm saying? So what color was your car? It was a gray M3. It was M3. gray. So you anybody wanna see it, they could go on my Instagram and say, <laughs> no, go all the way back. <laughs> so you could say, so you would still buy that car? Do you feel like Hell yeah, man. That car was a beautiful that car. car cause that's your name now. Well, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, like I right, cause I got a manager, right? And he told me <clears throat> to don't get rid of that car. <laughs> I don't think you. I don't think you just really got to keep the car. You could just always upgrade it. But I think now no, he was you saying, have to drive the M3. I, I do it a hundred percent. I'm gonna get back <laughs> in another M3. I already, I already got rid of the car. You know what I'm saying, but he was telling me like, nah, keep the M3 because look at Rick Ross and Ludacris. You know what I'm saying? They got, like for instance, Ludacris. He got an Acura. You know what I'm saying? That he that he had when he was driving before he even made it. You know what mm. I mean? And he still got that shit clean, pristine, like parked up in his garage. Nobody can't drive that. Mm. Rick Ross, you know what I'm saying? He has like a little oh, old like school. longevity. Yeah, you know I'm saying like it, it shows where you started from. You know what I mean? And it shows where you came from. So mm. he was telling me to keep it, and I'm Bro, like, in yeah. New York City though, you gonna have to <laughs> pack park that up somewhere. I know, far I mean, away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But New York City is crazy. Yeah, really so, did. um, so where are you originally from though? I'm originally from Queens, 100 percent from Queens. Okay. But <clears throat> I was always back and forth. So my dad lives in Brooklyn. Okay. You know what I mean? And my mom lived in Queens. So I so went to school, ended up going to school in Brooklyn. Okay. And I went to school in Queens. So it was like, okay. I got so friends in Queens. The, and the best floors. of both worlds. So who you fucking with more, Brooklyn or Queens? <laughs> oh, <Yo>, man. <laughs> <laughs> he don't got answer. He don't got answer. So how, did, so how did the music come about? The music came about in Brooklyn, Queens, and school? All right. So the music came about in Brooklyn. Okay. Same M3 I had. Okay. Drove to the shop to go get a fix. You know what I mean? And... A dude saw me. He was like, "Yo, you look like an artist." You know what I mean, cause I, I like look drippy. Like you know what I'm saying, regardless of fight, it's how I look on a regular. Man. Mm -hmm. Even before me starting rapping over the cases, I was just always like into like fashion and shit like that. So he's like, "Yo, you look like an artist. You wanna come to the studio?" I'm like, "I don't even know you. What are you talking about? It's my first time meeting you." And it wasn't the mechanic I went to. It was like, you know what I'm saying? It was the extras <clears> that mean it was the guy that owns the place. You know okay, what I'm saying? Like, okay. Bro, I don't know you, bro. Like, you so you know dubbed it. I dubbed it the first day. Okay. You know what I mean? So he persistent. He asked again. He was persistent. So I came back the next day to get it fixed. You know what I mean? Again. And you think he did that on purpose? Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he had his eye on me. He had his eye on me from since the first day he seen me. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And he was like, yo, I need you to come to the studio, man. Like, yo, you got the look. You got the look. I'm like, yo, so I don't got, I don't. I'm not really into music like that. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like, I fuck with music. Like, I listen to music. You so know you, you, your vision was not rap at that My vision moment. was So what rap, was your man. dreams at that moment? My dreams at that moment? Entrepreneur. I mean, like, I wanted to just, Strictly. you know what I mean, get my money up and invest my money in certain places with, you know what I mean? Okay. Like, so you go to the studio with the auto person. Yeah, so I ended up going to, you know, I took his, his uh, you know, his, what's the word I'm looking for? Shit. Uh, Information? Nah. Um, Contact? Uh, like his offer, there we go. Okay. Took his offer, went to the studio with him, and um, made a song, made a track, and the record was. So it was he was a busy. rapper too, or he was just directing it. Yeah, the man that has nothing to do with. Him. <laughs> if when you see him pull up, he has nothing to do. With, he, you would think like, yo, nah, like what are you doing being a manager for music? But he okay. loves music, like he just okay. loves. You know what I'm saying? And basically, <laughs> I'm gonna tell you a story after this too. That I, why he even got into involved with music? So funny, but yeah, um. Basically, when I went to that studio and I did the track, they was like, nah, you got a voice. You know what I'm saying? Like, yo, you should continue doing this shit. Okay. You know what I mean? And I'm like, all right, cool. Like, fuck with it. Like, you know what I'm saying? It's my first time in the booth. You know, you're a little shaky the first day. You know yeah. what I mean? And then as you go along, I actually found love for it. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm still doing it now today. All right, so how, about how long ago was that, though? That was literally last year, this time. 
Last year this time. Yeah, okay, so you about time. to be a year solid. Yeah. So how do you feel? How did you feel after your first studio session though? Like a first studio session. Was you like, mm, I'm getting the hang of this, or you was on some? Eh. I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> it shit during the pandemic, so I'm like, yo, fuck it, it's something to do. Like you know what I'm saying, where I'm, you know, when I'm bored, so I'm like, yo, let's go to the studio. He's like, ah, let's go. And as I kept going, I found love for it. I mean, okay, did you think you would get to where you are now, though? Um, hundred percent. Cause even after that day, he was like, "Yo, like, don't worry, man. He like, got I, you. I got you. Like, you know what I'm saying, like, you gonna make it, type shit. Like, you know what I'm saying. So I'm like, all right, cool. And every every day since that day, he been telling me like, "Yo, don't worry, man. Next year, yeah, yeah. Or, you know what okay. I'm saying, like, a few so months. He's don't worry. I got you." Always been super supportive. Yeah, mad supportive, man. Mad all right, supportive. so. Um, the first song you made, you, you dropped that, or you was like practicing a little bit more. Like, what was your first song you released? All right, the first two songs that got released, mm -hmm. those are songs I was just playing around with. Like, you know what I'm saying, okay. and like the engineers, they kind of like it's a little problem with that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying in the background, but I'm trying to get them songs took it down because it's, it's, it's not even mixed properly. It's not. Okay. You know what I mean, it's not even like you know what I'm saying. Like, so I'm you've been learning as you're going for sure. Yeah, hundred percent. I've been okay. learning as I'm going, but the actual song that I really dropped, like hundred percent, the song called Yeti. I mean, and that's up on every platform right now. Yep, all streaming platforms. All streaming platforms. Yeah. So, was you already writing? Like, so was they freestyle? Like, how was your, how's your writing process? I should say. I write before I go to the studio. Okay. I write before I go to the studio and I write in the studio. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes if I like, I'm, like for instance, like, <laughs> way I'm, I, I deal with my studio process is like, I gotta make sure I'm prepared when I go to the studio. Cause I don't like wasting time. You know what I mean, that's mm -hmm. one thing about me. It's, like, it's the biggest pet peeve I ever had. Like, I hate wasting time. So I go to the studio. I can't be in there smoking and drinking for like a good 10 hours in the last two hours. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah let's go jump in the booth. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got to be productive. Like, if I, if I'm not productive then. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. If I'm not productive, I, don't, I feel like feel like a waste. You know what I mean? So I write before I go in the studio. And then after that, I'll fuck around and freestyle. You know what I mean? Freestyle here and there and see what comes up. Because you never mm -hmm. know. That's when the best music comes to life. Okay, so who's... Who's some of the artists that inspire you though? Like inspire your sound, I guess. Um, most definitely, most definitely. Before I started doing music, I was into like '90s music, a lot of '90s music. So I would say like Mob Deep from old school. Talking okay. About old school right now, Mob Deep, Fifty. Um, the youngest don't know about that, but for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, some of them know about it. A little um, bit, a little bit. Biggie, know, Fifty Cent, Biggie. Yeah. Um, Jada. Jada Kiss and the shit that he did that the week. <laughs> yeah, proved, legendary. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, legendary, 100%. Um, and a few others. I can't really get the top off my head right now. But now in this generation, Pop Smoke was the biggest influence. You know what I'm saying? It's crazy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? 100%. Um, I listened to a little Ross Swish. Okay, uh, so you tapped in with the Brooklyn Sound yeah, a little bit. I just, I, would just, I just heard Tate Flo's record. You know what I'm saying? My first time hearing shit. Which I one? The, um, um, I what I'm talking about. Got that shit that he did, man. It's one record yeah, I heard from him. But um, all right. So what's some like what's some lessons you learned in the music industry like currently? I guess. Oh, hundred percent. Music industry is dirty, man. <laughs> dirty, dirty. Like I've been flying places and doing shows and shit, and I just realized like how dirty it is. Like you know what I'm saying, I never know. And it's crazy. My first interview so. I ever did, right? Mm -hmm. It was with uh, SO and um, Hyatt Heineken. I don't know if you know them. SO and Heineken. Um, they they do the, this. This is fifty. Okay. But, um, when I did that, they was like, "Yo, man, you, you, you want to leave a, a a nine to five or whatever the case is, or you or potentially you could get a nine to five instead of coming to this 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 dirty industry where you're not even guaranteed this and that." And I'm like, uh, yeah, "Nah, I'm gonna do it regardless of the fact." And I didn't realize until I'm really into it. I'm like, "Nah, like this shit is crazy." So you you would see yourself doing artistry long term, or you feel like you would transition to a CDO later, or 100 percent CEO. Man. Yo, like, I would do, like, music for, like, a good, like, five, six years, I think. Okay. After that, okay. I would, you know, transition. So, you, because a lot of people, like, just love music and they just feel like, this is what I'm going to do long term. I mean, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe I will continue. I mean, music. we can't predict the future. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah you know? like, it's like, it's like you going to college, you're like, yeah, you want to do that. And then next thing you know, you change up your... Facts. Mm -hmm. So, um... So during the quarantine, did you work on any projects? Was there, was that like not motivational? Was that in like, how was the quarantine for you? 
um, during the quarantine, like it was, it was still a learning process for me. So it wasn't just me working on projects. It was just me trying to like become myself, mm-hmm. become M three. Like you know what I mean? Okay. Because I'm still learning like my own ad libs. Like, you know what I mean? Like around that time, like okay. like what I'm gonna say? Like when I'm you know what I'm saying? When I'm trying to hype up the track or. Okay. Like, you know what I'm saying? What I'm going to rap about, whatever the case is, like, rap about myself, like, you know what I'm saying? Shit I used to do, whatever the case is. And that was it. Now, this year, this year is me, like, building, like, music, like, shit, like, you know what I'm saying? Building a, a project, you know what I mean? EPs. I got, I got literally, like, over 120 songs. Like, I recorded every Like, day. in the stash. Like, 100%, like, it's okay. a lot of music I got. I just never, like, I'm just trying to figure out, like, the good ways of putting the music out you know what i'm saying all right well you did a magazine you did music appearances you did you've yeah, been doing yeah. stuff yeah 100 percent. and yeah. you opened up for boosie right? yeah opened up for Lil boozy and uh young jeezy yeah so like how did some of those ventures come about it was cool 100 percent cool like it was, a, it was a good experience yeah. went down there and um I gave them a little New York style. You know what I mean, New York drill. You know what I mean, so was do you have like a team or is just like the same manager from? Chill? My manager is my team, man. <laughs> now I'm just asking. A lot of artists feel like they could do it all on by themselves. How I ain't gonna hold you. It's hard. It's hard because you have people that you got artists that got a person to do this on on the computer and then do that and then do this and do that and it's just me. Like, I mean, <laughs> yeah. So having another person around definitely helps. Yeah, but you can't trust people. That's the only thing. I don't fuck with niggas. So, yeah, we yeah. said the music industry dirty. So, 100%, yeah. <laughs> so um, what's some advice you would give though to an upcoming artist right now? Because now you could kind of get away with being independent. You don't really got to be signed nowadays. So, 100%, like, what's some 100%. advice you would give an upcoming artist? I mean, um, or something you wish you knew when you was first starting. It's a hard question. <laughs> <laughs> Why is that it's hard? so much shit. Like, you know what I mean, it's a lot of shit. As far um, as the artistry, from the artist's perspective. Just be yourself, I guess. Like, you know what I'm saying? Just be yourself. Don't uh, copy somebody else's style. You know what I mean? And especially, uh, like, take this shit serious. You know what I mean? I know a lot of artists right now that's, that's very talented, and they don't want to take it serious. You know what I mean? Hmm. Don't want to take it serious, and they, and they they talent go to waste. So that's the best thing I could say. So what do you feel like separates you from other artists? What makes you M3 stand out? I'm M3, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, I don't know. I guess my morals, you know what I mean? Principles, morals. Principles and morals. What you're fighting for, what you stand for. You know what I mean? All I, all I, I come stuff. from a Jamaican family, so mm-hmm. a lot of things I don't tolerate and a lot of things I do tolerate, but it's just the principle. For, for the people that have been following you, what, what's something like you would tell people or what's something you think people don't know about you so far? Oh, man. <laughs> I'm mad private. That's why I'm thinking so hard. Um, I feel like, don't know about me? Yeah. I work good with my hands. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 not in a dirty way, but... If you want to think about it, do for females. If they want to think about it, dirt, hell yeah. But I'm just saying, like, 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 I'm a handyman. Like, I, I do electrical work for you know. So um, before music, that's cars. what you was doing. Oh yeah, like two years ago. Matter of fact, two years ago, I was I was an electrician at that point in time. Okay. In the nine to five. All right, so still the beginning the days. All right, so as of all the songs you have that's out, well, you only have the Yeti song out, and then... Yeah, it's only Yeti out right now, because you know, I'm just trying to, like, do the right algorithm type shit, like, make sure okay. that next time I put out a song, mm-hmm. it's going to be a project, and I'm going to promote it the right way. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so out of all the songs that's in your stash, what is your favorite one right now? Oh, my favorite one Which right one now? Which one should we be on the lookout for? Kasi. Oh, matter of fact, I'm lying. I'm dropping the next. I'm dropping a song next month. Okay. No, sorry. October. I'm doing a video next October. month. October. Okay. Yeah, it's a song with uh, <clears throat> a show you named Royale. That's another artist. Fire. Okay. Fire. I'm gonna let you hear that shit when we be done. You know okay. Yeah. Okay. Some heat. And she can spit 100 percent, and she can sing it like she's so rapping beautiful. and singing. Yeah. Okay. Okay. She's nice. Well, yeah. Definitely look out for that. It's called Kasi. You know what I mean, you gonna turn up for that shit. Put that shit out. So when I drop the video, I'm gonna drop the song same time. Yeah. Definitely. So, what kind of sound would you say you have? Cause everybody's doing a drill, and everybody's like, um, do you feel like you're a drill or? I love drill, hundred percent. But then again, I'm like, I feel like drill, drill is to like, 
get the attention from the hood, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. get attention from the streets. And then, like, I do a lot of, like, I do some love songs as well, you know what mm-hmm. I mean? And I do some, like, like I, I try to go in different, different categories, because you never know who's, who you're going to attract, yeah. you know what I mean? So I, I, I try so doing, like, pop songs. Being like, you know versatile, I mean? for sure. Yeah, like, I'm very versatile, like. So any um dream collabs? Like, who's somebody on your bucket list you want to collab with? I'm going to collab with right now. Mm-hmm. I collab with A Boogie. A Boogie's nice. I like how he flew on the tracks. Um, who else? Who else is popping right now? It's a lot of artists that I <laughs> I don't be listening like. I mean, like, all for some reason. I like so, who you be listening to yourself all day? Nah, not necessarily. Oh, you, you said old school. You say you love that old school stuff. Yeah, so bringing old the old school into the new stuff. I'm trying to think. Just A Boogie. That's it. No out of town. Yo, you know what's funny? I heard um. I heard a rapper that you had posted one time named Playboy Grok or some shit like that. Who? A Boogie posted? No, no, no. You posted it on your page. Me? Yeah, something named Playboy Grok. That shit, his shit hard. I, okay. I would clap with him. He from the hood, too. Like, I don't okay. know if he's from upstate or yeah, from Staten Island. Know. I know he's not from Queens or Brooklyn. I don't think so. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think so, but okay. I fuck with him, too. Whoever that was. See, promo works, guys. Yeah, <laughs> but, um, so what's So what's next for you? What's next? The Kasi song. Um, the Kasi song. We're trying to do some more shows. I think I'm gonna open up for um, some girl names, man. I forgot their names, man. What? Two girls from Florida, Miami. City girls. City girls. There you go. Please do not say that on camera. Oh my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy. I don't listen to them. I'm sorry. I'm gonna be honest. I'm I'm very blunt. I don't care. Like, you know what I'm saying. Yo. But it is what it is. I'm opening up for them. And he I, said the two girls from Florida. Wow. They ain't from Miami? I'm looking, right? Yes, they are, but damn. I don't, like, sorry. Is, but, but, um, so, the Casa song. Yeah, hey, Casa song, most definitely. That shit gonna be lit. It's gonna be a problem when that shit drop, 100%. All right, so where should people find you? Where can they tap into your music? Tell the camera, tell that camera. Uh, M3 underscore Ra. Tell you can look me up, Instagram, um, Anytime I drop music is on all streaming platforms, regardless of the fact. So once you type in M3 Rock, you know what I'm saying? It's supposed to pop up. Um, you can look at me at Twitter, Facebook, you know what I mean, and TikTok. So, oh, yeah, all these platforms. Oh, yeah, come on TikTok. All right, Liddy.